My name is Jackie Powers. I'm an assistant professor of pediatrics here at Baylor College of Medicine in the section of hematology oncology and a member of the Texas Children's Cancer and Hematology Center. And today I'm going to be talking to you about iron deficiency. And this talk is really geared toward parents of children and teenagers with iron deficiency. And I'm going to try to answer the two most common questions I get, which is why is my child iron deficient and what can you do about it? So that's really what the focus of the talk will be today. So we'll go with the first part of why is your child iron deficient? And before I really get into why your child became iron deficient, I really wanna highlight why iron is so important for growing children. So iron is a critical nutrient. It's used throughout the entire body. It helps children's brains develop. It helps their muscles work more, um, more efficiently so that they can be strong and contract. It also helps develop red blood cells, which is the part of the blood that helps deliver oxygen to the rest of your body and helps give us energy. So iron is so important that the body tries as much as it can to hold on to iron very efficiently. For that reason, it's only really during times of stress when you become iron deficient. In children, this can mean a period of rapid growth where you need more iron to support development. It can also mean a period where you've lost too much blood and that iron that's within the blood has not been replaced. So those are the two different ways that you can become iron deficient and we'll go into that in a little more detail. So as I mentioned, not enough iron in, too much iron out. That's really what you're looking at when your child has become iron deficient. In young children, it's really not getting enough iron in and this is occurring in the diet, not getting enough iron in the foods that you're eating. We'll talk about a little bit more about those specifics. But in teenagers or in other school-age children who are eating a normal diet, what you're really worried about is that somewhere iron is getting lost. The body does not get rid of iron by itself. It only goes out of the body if you're losing blood somewhere. So this is really talking about young girls or adult women who are losing blood through their menstrual blood loss. It can also occur in teenage boys or school-age children who have some kind of underlying gastrointestinal condition like inflammatory bowel disease. But for the purposes of this talk, we're gonna talk about young children and then young women. So I mentioned young children are not getting enough iron in their diet. When they present to me, the most common culprit is cow milk. This occurs after the first year of life whenever children have switched away from formula or breastfeeding and have started to drink milk as their primary source of nutrition and haven't quite started eating all the table foods that they need to, to get all the different nutrients they need. So I will often see children that are drinking four, five, six cups of milk a day up to a half a gallon, going to three or four gallons of milk a week as their primary source. And obviously that's gonna be a problem. One, iron is not very high in cow milk. Two, the iron that is in cow milk is not very well absorbed. Three, when you're drinking a lot of milk, you're not really have, uh, not having much of an appetite for anything else. So you're not gonna be eating the chicken, the turkey, the vegetables, the beans, anything else that the parents are trying to offer to their child. So for that reason, we really advise families to limit the cow milk intake to less than two cups a day or 16 ounces. And that's really critical to allow the child to get other sources of iron in their body. So as I mentioned, teenage girls are at risk for iron deficiency, and this has been known for hundreds of years. And actually, back centuries ago in the 1600s, this was called green sickness. And that's because when women became very anemic or pale, their skin often had a yellow or greenish hue to it, and they were very tired. And so physicians would refer to young women being affected with green sickness and really that was because they were losing too much blood and didn't have enough iron to make new red blood cells. So for women today, this is still a major problem. Losing too much blood or having heavy menstrual bleeding can result in iron deficiency. And the way we regulate the cause is by giving hormonal therapy or birth control pills to help minimize blood loss. Something that's not the cause of iron deficiency, but I really like to highlight in my families is a side effect of iron deficiency, and that's called pica. So pica is the phenomenon of craving non-food substances. Often this is kind of mineral type texture, rocks, crunchy items like ice, 
paper or dirt. And so I'll often ask my families if they have any of these symptoms. So teenage girls will often endorse wanting to chew ice, craving sonic ice, the slushy ice, those kinds of things. Young kids, the families might mention that they're eating dirt, rocks, licking up um, lint off the floor, very unusual items. Some young children have been eating the cardboard books. Other families will report chewing on paper, like toilet paper or tissue paper. And so I've even had referrals where that's the primary complaint, not so much the anemia. The reason why I like to highlight this is because in my experience, about 50% of my patients have some sort of pica. When they start iron treatment, these symptoms improve and it's one of the first things that gets better. So it's very rewarding for the families to see this behavior resolve. It also helps because once the children are completely better and are no longer gonna be seen in clinic, I just tell the family, just keep that in the back of your mind because if you ever notice your child eating any of these foods or having these behaviors, it's a signal that you should maybe get their iron rechecked. So now that we've talked about why you become iron deficient, we're gonna talk about some newer innovative ways that we're treating iron deficiency. And this is important because for many decades, iron deficiency was treated for the very same way. Doctors would give um, iron pills several times a day over a course of several months and wish parents good luck. But really there's some ways we can improve upon care and help make it more efficient and help provide support to families. So the first thing I wanna highlight is a clinical trial called the Best Iron Trial. So a clinical trial is where we compare two or more different interventions to see which has the best outcome or effect on the patient. And for this study, we looked at two different iron medicines in young children who had nutritional iron deficiency anemia. So the average age of the 80 children that were enrolled in this study was 22 months or a little before their second birthday and they were taking on average four to five cups of milk a day. We gave them either a medicine called ferrous sulfate or a medicine called iron polysaccharide complex, and we wanted to see which group of children got better faster. We had two main conclusions from the study. The first was that we found that ferrous sulfate was better at correcting the anemia or making their red blood cell number normal at the end of the 12 weeks of the study compared to the other group. For that reason, we recommend ferrous sulfate as the first line therapy for these children. And we also found as a secondary outcome, or as another thing we were looking at in the study, was that giving low dose medicine, low dose iron, just once a day, was effective in correcting the anemia in the majority of patients. So this is in contrast to giving two to three times a day iron therapy at higher doses, which can also lead to side effects like abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and can just be more difficult for parents who are trying to get a young child to take medicine constantly. So a second approach that we've been using is trying to leverage technology. And this is an ongoing research project, so this is not publicly available, but we're working on developing a website entitled Iron Child. It's an interactive website that was developed with and for parents with iron deficiency anemia. And it was specifically developed with animated content to help give an overview of iron deficiency, how you would treat it, give problem solving skills when it gets more difficult over time, and then some other motivating factors for families. In addition to this, um, the website allows you to select goals at the end of each clinic visit and answer questions to make sure you understand exactly what's going on with your child and what you need to do about it. It's available in English and Spanish, so we're hoping it'll be available to a wide range of racial and ethnic groups, which we think is very important. These are some of the screenshots from Iron Child. So as I mentioned, this is still an ongoing research project. So to access the website, enrolled patients and families will have a username and password. They meet uh, someone who navigates the website with them. This is Maria, she's a nurse that helps counsel them and narrates all the content. And this is just a screenshot of the three different sessions that the families can engage in. The first section being um, related to the very first visit, giving an overview of what they can expect over the next few months. The second session um, becoming available after about a month of therapy. So it helps really focus on problem solving skills and motivation. And then the third session is available at the end of a typical treatment course to provide re-emphasis on all the concepts that the families may wanna know for the future.
Finally, our center has significant experience in giving another type of therapy, intravenous iron therapy. This is considered a second line therapy, so we don't use it as the first therapy for all children with iron deficiency, but it's particularly good for children who are severely affected or have very complex or recurrent iron deficiency. So if you have a child who's been, been iron th on iron therapy for months to years, has recurrent iron deficiency due to ongoing blood loss or some other undiagnosed condition, IV iron therapy is a nice alternative. This is administered directly through an IV that we place in clinic, can be done in our infusion center, and allows us to give a large dose of iron therapy without having to worry about whether it's absorbed, and it also bypasses the need for daily medication adherence. So this is another option that we're looking at and really researching to understand better which patients would benefit most from this type of therapy. So in summary, the key points for iron deficiency, it occurs in children if you're not getting enough iron in, so the diet is too low in iron, or if you're losing too much blood and losing iron there. And we have several innovative ways to treat iron deficiency at our center. We use a low dose oral iron therapy approach. We're using mobile health technology to help support families. And we also have IV iron therapy for more complex and um, persistent cases. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions.